All right, lads, how are we doing? Welcome back to the Debut 22 YouTube channel. I said welcome back, there's another video, so it's welcome to. Um, yeah, first video, first game of the season in the Championship from Fairman Inverness, East End Park. Making this walk normally on a match day would be relatively busy, but obviously dead today, I'm lucky enough to get to go to the game. So yeah, just going to be a wee insight into basically what it's like. A lot of people ask, what's it like being at games, um, you know, behind closed doors and the press, all the rest of it, no fans, what's it like? So this will just be a wee insight into what it's like. So, you know, hopefully, confirm I'll get the job done and I'll be a happy man come full time, but we'll have to see. So yeah, this is it, basically. Just on the game itself. Obviously last night we had Hearts Dundee at Tynecastle, 6-2 at the Jam Tarts, which was a bit of a doing for Dundee. I think a lot of people pre-season would have said that the top four in the championship this season would be Hearts, Dundee, Dunfermline and Inverness. So, yeah, I'm interested to hear these two teams set their stall out in terms of can either of them get close to Hearts and challenge. Well, you know, maybe they not be quite as good as we think. Maybe teams like Air United might push the top four. So, definitely a fascinating encounter for the opening day. And obviously with all the stuff in uh, lockdown with the boards fighting Ross MacArthur and the Inverness chairman were at loggerheads throughout lockdown. That might add a bit of spice on the part today, you never know. But, yeah, it'll be a, an interesting game. Um, it's typical though, because I, I mean, I've been so confident with them filming them well this season, and after such a good League Cup campaign, it just wouldn't surprise me. The bar's went blue today, I've just got that nerves that kicked in now being a Dunfermline fan. It's just so typical that they build you up, you let the, then they let you down. Um, hopefully, today though, they continue the form at the start of the season and, and get the job done. So, I'm in the ground, temperature checks and all that done. Um, it's quite weird though, because normally, the press box is over there, normally I'd be in there, but social distancing and all the rest of it, I'm up in the posh seats in the main stand, so yeah. Never sat here before in a, in a, in a game coming to, to watch anyway, but you know, it'll do. Decent view, um, and just hope to God pass get three points. But nice and warm today though, I was here on Friday night and it was absolutely freezing, so. And apparently this is the coldest press box in Scotland, so. These guys did no better than me, but I'm just glad the sun's out. And hopefully, hopefully three points to follow. Apparently Celtic are 2-0 down at our home to Rangers, so I'm looking forward to going back to the flat and seeing Ryan and seeing how he's uh, dealing with it all. But yeah, hopefully uh, the big game's at East End today, everyone knows that. So hopefully it'll be a good one. East End looking absolutely beautiful in the sunshine this afternoon. Love the work that Jason and the guys at the AFC crowd displays have done. On and on. Nice wee German flag in there for the, the new German owners. Um, I don't know if any of them will be here today, but hopefully when this place is back with some fans in it, you know, they'll, they'll come and see what East End's all about. Well, I hope that's true. This is definitely the weirdest part of the afternoon so far when you're sitting in the crowd normally it's quiet when we get in and then you start to see the fans arrive obviously that's not happening just now so teams are out well in their warm-ups first game of the season normally be a right buzz around the ground but nobody's arriving it's, this is probably the strangest part i found of doing games so far is that sort of last half hour 20 minutes before before kickoff and grounds are supposed to fill up and it's not happening so yeah it's 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 definitely weird eerie is definitely the word i'd use um and it's one of those that's down to the players to make their own atmosphere when they get out there Incidentally, Wee Willie Collins are referee, so hopefully Wee Willie behaves himself. <laughs> I'm also already not looking forward to getting back to the flat. Celtic have just been beaten 2 0. So, you know, I don't think Ryan will be very happy. I might just have to hide in my room. Hopefully, I'm happy. I know it's not a miserable house, which, you know, the pars could quite happily make it the case. But yeah, I'm looking forward to TSF next week, talking about the old farm, reviewing it. That should be tasty. Um, I might just go on the wind up all week and just try and get, get a reaction out of him, but we'll see. Parr's looking a lot bit sort of light on attacking options now. Gavin McGill obviously going out on loan to Edinburgh City. Um, so it's just Lewis McCann is the only other real backup striker from McManus O'Hara. Um, so you'd hope that that'll mean Crawford's got something up his sleeve, maybe somebody coming in to sort of fill that spot because, you know, an injury for one of the front two and all of a sudden um, they're looking a lot bit light. Um, but in terms of the bench itself, there's some real strength there as well. Kerr McEnroy and Lewis Mayo both back to the 21s onto the bench. Lewis Mayo kept two clean sheets for the 21s, so a really good option to have there. Obviously, Murray and Watson look really solid at the moment, but you know he'll definitely be chapping the door at some point soon. Um, 
just just the only slight worry is looking at the bench. I mean, Fraser Murray there, who's, who's um, scored goals, looked good pre-season, but apart from that, in terms of attacking options, um, Lewis McCann yet to get a single yes, goal. Yes, yes, yes. It's also just Dom been Dom last time. Inverness for East End Park was a Dom Thomas wonder goal, so. Um, you know, his early season form would suggest that he's capable of producing the magic this afternoon from Fellow Need it. He's been the star man so far. Um, you would worry if there was an injury to him, I think, because he's, he's proven already how key a player he's going to be on from his spell from January onwards. But if you're ever nest, there's one player in that the team you're worried about today, I think it'd be Don Thomas. So hopefully a, a, a good showing from him this afternoon. Three minutes will kick off and there is an eerie silence at East End. This is the weirdest part of these games, just the pre-match silence around the ground. Um, especially on a sunny day like this, you'd imagine what, three, four, five thousand maybe, so strange. Um, but if he's in like the last Friday night, I won't be complaining comfortably. Uh, One nil Inverness, so the pass are back, baby. <laughs> Nikolai Todorov with a goal, great ball in to be fair uh, for the right hand side, and Todorov arrived at the back post to slam at home, so not the best of starts. Um, yeah, dreadful. Pass just absolutely sleeping for that first goal. Um, since then, I mean, they've got the ball, but it's perfect for Inverness now. I mean, coming away from home to a team that are. Maybe they're thereabouts in terms of where your aspirations are for the season. You've already got something to defend. Um, MNS last season defensively were very good. Um, you know, we'll have to see if they can keep that up this afternoon, but Pars are already on the attack here again. But goes to the first corner for the Pars, but they'll need to respond quickly. Already clear as day, Don Thomas is going to be the next fit for Don Fellman yet again to the left hand side there. Looks like he's going to lose it, he's done too much with the ball, but he eventually skins his man whips and a wicked ball towards O'Hara. Dow coming at the back as well, but MNS defend it well. But a decent reaction to the open goal from the pass. Wow, you couldn't believe it. You could not rate it. The Fellman finally starting to get into the game. Corner on the left hand side. Who takes it? Dom Thomas. Who scores the goal? You and Murray. I mean, that's the fourth time in what three games that those that combinations worked to go for the pass, and it's one each. Um, the Fellman finally grown into it. And yeah, it's that goal. You and Murray again. The star. What a start his uh, tenure as pass captain. I know a pass corner. I dare say that the Cal defenders will be trying to pick up Ewan Murray this time. A bit tighter than they did last time. This is one of the best things about this game is hearing everything from the referees and stuff. Lee Willie Collum is uh, very officious, shall we say. But Dolly in this corner about Thomas will be looking right for Ewan Murray's snapper yet again, I'm sure. Big, big chance for Dunferman again. Ball comes in from Thomas low at the front post this time. It's cleared, comes back to Ian Wilson, whose effort is over the bar. Tell you what, the unmarked, um, about the penalty spot in terms of range from goal, it's got to hit a target from there. Pass probably should be 2 1 up. Half time East End on Fellman 1, Inverness 1. Inverness were really early goal, but apart from that, Pass have probably had the better of it. Um, Ian Murray again. Matt Don Thomas Corner made it 1 each. Um, other big chance for Pass, Ian Wilson had a really big chance. Ball came back to him about oh, 12 yards out inside the box from a corner, he's got to hit a target, blazes it over. Um, and Murray still looked reasonably threatening on the break, um, but it's a big second half here at East End, no doubt about that. I think if Dunfermline can go and get a win, um, that'll be a big uh, statement of intent for those who are, are backing them for, for promotion this season. And that wouldn't be me, of course, but um, yeah, big second half coming up and be interesting to hear it does. The, the, the most fascinating thing about being in the ground with no fans is, is the, what you can hear in the pitch, and Willie Collins has been very entertaining, as he said. Um, 
just you can hear everything he says till John Robertson has been moaning and he's talking about free kicks and stuff and the way he talks to the players at, at set pieces etc but yeah um, the cold's starting to set in a little bit now so hopefully some goals to warm me up in the second half so this game finally poised going into the second half one thing that's crossed my mind just after watching Dundee at, at Tain Castle last night and how you know utterly dreadful they were um, and bar Charlie Adam um, it looks like they could be having a long season both these sides so far have shown you know it's up to me that I think they'll be up there um, things to work on for both um, but they want to be on top as you'd expect be the home side Inverness obviously missed a few through, through uh, injury as well as Todd Rob going off in the first half but these are two good sides I think I'll be up there coming the end of the season second half's massive though I mean you know you can set a marker down especially with the recent record of Helmut had over Inverness here especially um, you know a win would be a big big marker for John Robertson now I mean yeah they're, they're still in a good position they're in the game um, would he probably more likely to take a point than Stevie Crawford especially on the road so you know, Duffelman would imagine we're proactive to try and get that winner. Uh, it's just, just about watching the counter-attack as teams are just starting to come out. One of the interesting things is that, obviously, you know, the teams aren't sharing, coming out the same tunnel. The away team are coming out of the, the away end. They're obviously training in the, uh, changing in the concourse, sorry. Uh, once the players come out of the tunnel as per normal. Another thing here, just um, in this press box up here, well, I'm not, I'm not even in the press box, in this press area, you know, there's, there's about... Oh, 20, 25 people maybe, all distanced completely well. If you were to multiply this around the stadium, you'd, you'd get two and a half, three thousand in here, no bother. It's just infuriating, it's absolutely infuriating. Um, and you've got all the buzz of a new season that we've got here today, just without a crowd to, to enjoy it. And I think one of the things that, for me, striking this is the third game I've done um, this season. You know, I, I think everyone's like said to me, oh, I'm so lucky to get, to, to get back, and yeah, I completely get that, but it, it's it's just I know it's so cliche to say it's so obvious to say it really isn't the same um, you know and well so it's good to be at East End it's just not the same it's like watching um, you know like a, like a training game albeit there are there is a lot more at stake than that but you know that's definitely weird and hopefully they'll get get some sort of supporters back in here as soon as possible parts are just out for the second half Inverness as well just coming down the steps of the way end big big second half pass I'll shoot towards the Nori which has been decorated well as we said earlier on um, so signs of the fans uh, certainly expect them not being here I'm sure the pass fans will be delighted if the team can get three points have an S we'll, we'll try and stop that I'm sure but um, looking forward to the second half let's we'll see how we do Bars break well down the left hand side O'Hara driving towards goal McManus across the box probably should have crossed it um, in the end one of those he probably had too much time and he tried to go for goal to flick for a corner which to be fair I haven't watched the pass so far this season might be the the optimum outcome. Thomas will try and swing it in, I'm sure for, well, you and my obviously, and we'll see how we, we do here. Thomas, over it. Whips it in. So there's Watson arriving at the back post with a, you know, thunderous header, but he pushed his man over. And it goes for a, a free kick to Inverness, but um, Pars started well. And big, big chance of the Pars. Kevin O'Hara down the right hand side, gets to the byline, cuts it back from McManus, he's arriving. Low shot, saved by the feet of Ridgers, and Inverness clear about the biggest chance of hitting half so far Inverness on the, on the attack here but Pars should be able to deal with it and they have done but big big chance for them there another big big chance for the Pars Dom Thomas down the left hand side lovely bit of skill to beat his man after a great ball from Edwards drove forward shot deflected wide for another corner for them but Pars starting to look more alive in the second half looking for that that goal to put him in front <laughs> 2 1 at the Pars um, Long free kick worked into the box, I'm not entirely sure who took that one, I kind of missed it. Ball to back post, McManus um, gets on the end of a Watson uh, knockdown. McManus' is effort saved by Ridgers, comes back out to Ryan Dow, he arrives in to smash it home. 2-1 at the pars, um, with what, 13 to go, so a big last 13, let's hope they can hold on. Um, but yeah, big, big goal. Dangerous free kick here for the rest, they just had one before that was smashed over the bar. Um, yeah, it's going to be another last 10, I'm not looking forward to it, to be perfectly honest with you. Josh Edwards picked up a book in there for a foul on Welsh, I think it was, he was driving forward. Big, 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 big chance for him on here. About 20, 23, 25 yards out maybe. Um, Paul Williams sorting the wall out. Here it comes. It's hit the wall. And out, and here comes the fell on the break actually. Dow's driving forward. Please in the middle. Could come for Fraser Money. 
Oh, Roger scrambles that away. Got a feeling it'll be a bit of an end to end last 10 minutes here. 3 1 at the pars. Declan McManus with a goal. A lovely breakaway from McManus. Thomas played a ball down the outside. He charged it on goal, beat his man there. Looked like he might have attracted the foul. He kept it. Cut back to the edge of the edge of box. Right footed effort. Deflected and in past Mark Rogers. 3 1 at the pars. Surely that should be the foul heading to three points now. He'll be delighted with that, McManus. It, it would have been a typical striker, the Dow goal. He'd probably have been annoyed himself if he didn't score it. Now he's got one off the mark in the second spell at the pars. He's deserved it this afternoon, worked hard, and, and he's got his just rewards. Cali now have got maybe maybe 10 minutes now to try and rescue a point. But from, from two goals down, um, it's going to be a tall order. And, uh, Full time East End on Fairman 3 and Vaness 1. A great, great start to the league season for the Pars, who, after going down to a really early goal by Nikolai Todorov, you know, really came into the game after that. Um, fully deserved the three points, but Manus and Dow with goals in the second half. Change from Crawford went to a 4 2 3 1 in the second half. Dow playing just off McManus, and obviously those two. Ended up getting the goals a big, big win, especially considering how poor the record was over Inverness last season. Um, and yeah, it's a great marker to be set by Stevie Crawford's men and hopefully the side of things. Because I thought, you know, obviously Nick, Big, Big Nicky's uh, scored the, the early goal, and he was—he's a very good focal point for us. You know, he does the same job that McManus does for uh, for the film, and he holds the ball up, he brings other people into play, and obviously losing them, they say we thought was a bit of a, a, of a robust challenge. Um, it wasn't, a, no, it wasn't a dirty challenge. It was just a hard challenge, which we found incredible. That there was no free kicking or any other action taken on it, and. You know, he's an unbelievable pain. It could be a rib, could be a lung, we don't know yet. Um, so it was a blow. Yeah, I'm being honest on that. It's just, I think it's the strongest group mentally as well. Um, I've got trust in them that we work side it. When you know you're going through the harder parts, we could have crumbled after going one nothing down today to an early goal. We've shown a, a resilience in that side of things. And um, we all will get, we're going to get different tests over the season. It's, I've said it, we've, we've got off to a great start in the League Cup campaign, but um, we've come up against a very good Inverness side. And I know they were missing a few players today, but they've got a decent squad as well, Inverness. And um, we've managed to come away with three points, which is very good. Well, there we have it, full time 3 1 to the Pars. Um, obviously, I've just seen a, a little glimpse of the post match content. Obviously, Stevie Crawford, a very happy man, more so than John Robertson. Um, who, you know, he, I mean, he, he seemed to think that it was uh, very much next goal winner at, at one each, and he probably had a point. It was vital that the Pars got that goal when they did. Um, yeah, just delighted. Great, great start to the season. Um, especially after going down, you know, to that goal so early on to bounce back the way we did was brilliant. And um, yeah, hopefully we can continue that all our way next week, which, you know, will be a tricky game. It always is going there. Um, you know, small classic pitch isn't great. Um, but, you know, um, there's definitely a feeling amongst the supporters and it seems the players and coaching staff that this is a, a special side that are watching East End and maybe something special's on you know on the go in terms of how we'll do this season. But that was definitely a massive, massive start, big result and yeah, talk about laying down a marker. Um and yeah, that was my Saturday East End. Hopefully you all enjoyed. If you have, you know, like, subscribe, all the rest of it. Um I'll be talking about this game and all the other games across the weekend, including that old farm this afternoon on TSF this week, so check out that and yeah. Cheers.